It's going. FB Live. Are there viewers? Huh? Viewers. Hello? Keep quiet, my sister. <laughs> I'm gonna try to talk about politics. Wait lang. Set up lang. So, as I said, subukan kong i-discuss kung anong ideas ko about um, a different world or another kind of world or another world is possible. Um, pero bagong lahat kasi, I think kailangan kong i-lay down kung ano yung mga basics ng perspective na pinanggagalingan ko kasi, um, I mean, it gives you a backgrounder of where I'm coming from and at the same time, para may matutunan naman na yung lahat. So, I'm trying to actually learn and review a bit about anarchism. So, ayun. Hi, Donna. Ah, this is so weird. So, tinatry ko lang din to kasi gusto kong makita kung may magagawa ba usapang lalaki off la- uh, online habang hindi pa din lumabas mga tao. Anyway, um, So, actually, nilist ako dito yung basic principles ng anarchism. Sorry, yung ingin ng sister ko. Um, nilist ako yung basic principles ng anarchism galing dun sa book na Anarchism and its Aspirations ni Cindy Milstein. Uh, medyo, well, relatively konti lang siya for like a discussion about anarchism. But, basically, nakaugat kasi yung anarchism sa... Uh, pagtakel ng issue ng hierarchy and domination. So, anarchism as a movement is really rooted against hierarchy and domination of any kind. Um, so, malalim ang ugat ng anarchism pagdating sa kalayaan or liberation and freedom ng mga tao. And there's a difference between the two kasi sabi ni Milstein, um, basically, kaya mo siyang i-discuss as a difference between freedom from and freedom to. So, Uh, freedom from is basically um, freedom from oppression, freedom from... Ay, mga basically mga negative freedoms or mga bagay na hindi natin kayang gawin dahil pinipigilan tayo ng sistema o ng kahit anong ibang bagay. Freedom to naman, yung mga bagay na dapat kaya natin gawin. Uh, so, parang kung meron kang freedom from oppression, freedom from hunger, for example, meron kang freedom to freely associate with different kinds of people, different groups of people, different organizations, etc. At uh, dahil dun sa, uh, naka, naka, what are you doing? <laughs> At dahil nakaugat nga ang uh, mga, nakaugat ang philosophy ng anarchism sa kalayaan, mga tao, um, hindi niya sinasabi na pare-pareho ng estado ang mga tao sa lipunan. So, nire-recognize na rin na iba-iba talaga tayo ng kakayanan at pinanggagalingan. So, we come from different contexts, we come from different um, backgrounds and abilities. Uh, isa doon, syempre, ay, for example, um, disability, gender, for example, iba-iba yung mga karanasan, iba-iba yung danas, iba-iba yung realidad na pinagdadaanan ng mga tao dahil iba-iba yung mga ginagalawan nilang spaces sa mundo. So, everyone is not the same, but um, they have this principle called equal- equality of unequal. So basically, um, dahil magkakaiba yung mga tao, uh, hindi ibig sabihin nun ay dapat hindi sila pantay-pantay, kumbaga, dahil magkakaiba sila, iba-iba sila ng mga paraan sa pagpractice ng kalayaan nila, iba-iba sila ng paraan ng pag-achieve ng mga pangangailangan nila, so, people should be given equality to pursue um, their needs and wants in spaces na nararapat para sa kanila. And of course, they're the only ones who would be able to determine what they want and what they need. So, sustenance is different for everyone, basically. Um, for example, 
um, yung mga specific na communities dito sa Pilipinas, uh, differentiating urban spaces from indigenous people, iba-iba yung konteksto nila, iba-iba yung mga pangangailangan nila kasi iba-iba sila ng mga environment. But communities should be given the freedom to pursue these things, to fulfill their own needs without anyone else telling them na hindi nila dapat gawin yun. Kasi sila naman yung nag-i-exist dun sa konteksto. Sila yung nakakaalam kung ano yung mga pangangailangan nila. So sila lang din yung makakamit ng sarili nilang needs. No one can ever tell them what they need or don't need kung hindi naman sila bahagi ng komunidad na yun, kumbaga. Um, for example, ano ba? Ang pinakamahalagang example siguro, mamaya na kasi medyo... Um, papasok naman tayo dun sa um, discussion ng COVID maya-maya. Pero dahil magkakaiba nga yung mga tao, there's differentiation, there's differentiation, there's variety, and that's necessary. Uh, meron silang idea ng from each to each. Um, so you can contribute what you can based on your abilities and your passions, and you should also be given what you need and desire. So, voluntary lahat, uh, hindi sa pilitan ng pagtatrabaho sa lipunan, pero kung ano yung kaya mong ibigay at ano yung gusto mong ibigay, yun lang yung, um, yun yung ina-expect sa'yo bilang bahagi ka ng isang ecosystem ng community mo. So, meron kang work, work na voluntary, but there's also the sense of responsibility to and for one another. So, hindi ka nagbibigay dahil lang, eto lang yung ano, ganyan. Parang hindi ka nagdadamot, hindi kasama ang pagdadamot sa diskurso ng anarkismo, it's really knowing your own boundaries and limitations while at the same time, understanding na you're part of a community. So, actually, kapag kainintindi natin tong um, from each to each na prinsipyo ng anarchism, we drastically alter what work means for us. For example, under COVID, lumalabas na ang daming trabaho na hindi naman talaga kailangan at ang daming trabaho na kayang gawin in context outside of our weird morality for productivity. So, for example, ayun nga, um, work in society today is typically defined as, kumare papasok ka sa opisina, you will stay in the office for 8-9 hours, maybe more. Tapos, kikita ka ng pera based on, I don't know, how many hours you put in, how much output you give. Parang ganun. Pero hindi naman hindi ganon yung perspective o pananaw ng anarkismo sa trabaho. Kasi hindi mo naman masusukat ng ganon-ganon lang at hindi pantay-pantay ang pagsukat sa effort ng mga tao kung pagbabasihan mo siya sa isang standard na mutually at equally applied sa lahat. So, for example, ba ang abilities at kayang ibigay ng isang person with disability sa isang tao na wala namang disability? Magkaiba sila ng oras, magkaiba ang takbo ng lipunan at ng oras para sa kanila. Kaya iba-iba yung kaya nilang in-contribute. Kung gagamitin mo na standard ang trabaho na meron tayo sa lipunan ngayon para sa lahat ng tao, obviously, merong malalamangan, merong madadaya, may mga magkukulang, merong mga sosobra. Overall, hindi siya pantay na um, sitwasyon para sa lahat ng tao. And um, doon papasok yung diskurso ng mutual aid isa sa mga pinakamahalagang uh, principles ng anarchism. So, mutual aid is basically um, a fancier word, I guess. A more politicized term for cooperation and kindness. Uh, yun yung pinakamadaling way para i-word siya, I guess. Um, mutual aid is basically a reciprocal exchange um, from our differentiation. So, um, kung iba ang kakayanan mo, iba ang kaya mong ibigay sa lipunan, iba din yung... Um, Iba din dapat yung expectations, o actually dapat wala nga expectations na ganun ka strict as stringent sa'yo. So, dapat um, kung magmumula tayo sa space ng mutual aid, for example, paano ko ba siya concretely ilalapat? Um, mutual aid, for example ngayon, um, yung kapitbahay mo, kailangan niyang um, pumunta ng palengke para bumili ng pagkain para sa pamilya niya, pero wala siyang sasakyan. Ikaw, meron kang sasakyan. So, ang kaya mo i-contribute sa kanya ay yung pagmamaneho mo. Pero pagbalik ninyo ng bahay ninyo, dahil magkapit bahay kayo, kung ano mang kaya niyong ibigay na tulong, ibibigay niya. Hindi siya, hindi kanya, parang hindi mo siya titingnan as pagbabayad ng utang. Kasi sa anarkismo, walang sense ng utang. Wala dapat yung feeling na, yun, na perpetually indebted ka sa isang tao. Mutually, it is basically giving what you can give. And at the same time, understanding that everyone will be able to give in their own different ways.
So, it's really rooted in the sense of generosity and abundance na inherent sa mga tao. It's really, um, sinabi ni Cindy Milstein re- uh, really nicely, um, it's this sense or notion that kindness never runs out. Um, and related to that, I think, is yung social ecological orientation ng anarchism. So, hindi lang siya ecological dahil environmental yung tuhog niya. Pero ecology kasi is rooted in this relationship and interaction between different beings that exist in a space. So, uh, sabi ni Cindy Milstein na yung parang ang, ang environment natin or nature itself, which is humans and non-humans, um, is evidence of mutual aid and differentiation. So, iba-iba ang purpose ng bawat tao bawat nila lang sa lipunan, iba-iba yung kaya nilang ibigay, iba-iba yung kaya nilang, um, kailangan nilang kunin mula sa environment. And, um, hindi ibig sabihin nga ng pagkakaiba-iba na yon ay hindi sila pantay-pantay. So, for example, humans, plants, and animals are all equal, but they exist very differently. So, isa pang dagdag niya siguro is that, um, uh, sa ecology, um, or ano ba, sa environment, I guess, Change is inherent. So, lagi talagang magbabago ang mga bagay-bagay. Uh, at kailangan natin i-recognize na yung pagbabago na yon ay hindi lang sa environment natin, kung hindi na sa mga tao din. So, and I think, ayun nga, isa sa mga pinaka-important na tenets na itong uh, pagiging ecological or um, ecological orientation ng anarchism is that it's social. Necessary ang um, relationships natin sa isa't isa para mabuhay tayong lahat. Um, that brings us to the principle of voluntary association and accountability. So, itong voluntary association and account- accountability is basically rooted in um, relationships, interactions with one another. But those relationships and interactions shouldn't be forced. Wala dapat pinipilit na pumasok sa relationship, sa isang trabaho, sa isang sitwasyon na labag nga sa loob nila. So, relating to each other is not by force but by genuine desire. So, it's rooted in your freedom of choice. You don't have to put up with shit, basically. But, at the same time, hindi ibig sabihin na free choice yung relation or association mo with others. Uh, you can just, parang, pwede ka na lang pumasok at lumabas sa isang situation ng walang sino-sino. Kung baga, nang hindi ka mindful sa konteksto na pinanggagalingan mo at na uh, sa community na ginagalawan mo. So, if you get into an association or a relationship, there's always this expectation na you're both giving and receiving. And um, accountability is necessary for that. Kasi for example, nasa isang community ka and you promised that you will be doing this. Pero na-realize mo na um, it's asking too much from you or um, hindi mo kayang ibigay kung ano yung kay- Hi, Sir P. Sorry, let's track ako. Hindi mo kayang ibigay kung ano yung um, expected mo sa sarili mo na kaya mong ibigay nung una. Um, hindi ibig sabihin na nababaklas ka na lang totally. There's always this mindfulness na pumasok ako sa situation na to um, knowing na ito yung expectations at ito yung ipinangako ko sa mga tao and I'm gonna do my best to live up to that while at the same time also understanding kung ano yung boundaries ko. So, it's really just um, understanding that your relationships and interactions with people bear weight but at the same time, being honest with yourself and being honest with others. So basically, honesty, honor, respect for one another, but also knowing that you're human and you have limitations. Uh, dahil free choice nga ang interactions or ang root ng relationship sa anarchism, there's always the sense of joy and spontaneity na um, hindi natin usually gusto kasi hindi tayo hinubog kumbaga na matutong maging okay sa mga sorpresa sa buhay. I guess. I don't know. Pero ako, as someone with anxiety, spontaneity is something that I'm really terrified of. It's something that I'm grappling with. Kasi, nahihirap na gumalaw sa isang mundo na hindi ko alam kung saan ako mapapadpad. But at the same time, that's also where the joy of living with people comes from. Kasi, hindi mo alam kung ano yung ibibigay sa'yo ng ibang tao. Hindi mo alam kung anong mangyayari. But you trust that they have your best interests in mind. Of course, very idealist. But at the same time, this trust is really what makes our communities cohesive. They're what make our communities whole. And it's really this trust in the people's differentiation and freedom of association na hindi ka nila bibitawan at hindi ka nila sasaktan. So, you can never guess or plan for what other people will do. Uh, sabi nga ng crime think, I think, there's no blueprint for society. 
And that's what gives our lives more joy and meaning. And joy isn't just happiness, but sabi nga sa Joyful Militants, is this opening up to the vast possibilities that the world has for us. So, um, ayun, uh, for me, for example, uh, the way that I see it is, feeling joy about our relationships with each other. Basically, ikaw, nilalagay mo yung puso at kalooban mo sa kamay ng isang tao at pinagkakatiwalaan mo na hindi ka niya sasaktan. Hindi mo alam kung hindi ka niya talaga sasaktan or whatever. Pero dahil nagtitiwala ka sa kabutihan na taglay ng isang tao, para sa'yo, um, yun, um, you're just gonna have to trust na this person will act in your best interest and in the best interest of I don't know, the other people in the community. And I guess the last principle to discuss from Cindy Milstein's book about anarchism is the fact that um, there is unity and diversity. Um, so, sa lahat ng pagkakaiba-iba ng mga tao, sa lahat ng mga posibilidad na magkasakitan tayo and everything, um, there's still this sense na nag exist tayo sa isang komunidad. <laughs> uh, at um, kahit na magkakaiba-iba tayo, we see the inherent um, similarities in people. Which is basically our being human and our desire to live in such a way na hindi tayo nasasaktan, na hindi tayo nagugulangan, at na masaya tayo sa mga buhay natin. So, with that super, um, I don't know, unsatisfactory discussion on the basic principles of anarchism, I'm gonna get into the necessity of discussing um, how another world is possible in the context of COVID. So, isa sa mga pinakamainat na topic siguro ngayon sa politika natin, as well as sa kalusugan natin, is itong ratratan ni Vico Soto at ni Duterte. So, uh, ano ba nangyari? Si Vico Soto basically nagmamakawa siya, napayagan uh, para sa mga tao yung paggamit ng tricycle sa Pasig. Kasi ang daming tao walang transportation, etc. And for us in Marikina, it's also reality. So, apparently, uh, requirement ng government na kumuha ka ng quarantine pass at sa bawat household, isang tao lang ang pwedeng kumuha ng quarantine pass. At siya lang ang pwedeng bumili ng pagkain, gamot, other necessities sa bahay ninyo. So, for us, sa konteksto ng tahanan namin, nasa walo kaming tao sa bahay. Wala kaming sasakyan, puro kami babae. So, kailangan namin ng quarantine pass. Ang barangay hall ay napakalayo sa bahay namin. At the same time, kailangan namin bumili ng pagkain, maybe food for a week, for eight people, at hindi namin kayang bitbitin yun, na hindi kayang bitbitin ng isang tao lang yun, mula sa palengke, o sa pure gold man, or wherever, papunta sa bahay namin, because that's so much food. So, very, very rooted in the needs of the people, yung hinihiling ni Vico Soto, na sana iangat yung ban sa tricycles. Pero, si Duterte, in the middle of the night, I don't know, mga 1am na yata siya nag press con, I think, kasi 1.11 na, nag pa yung inquirer kagabi na, it's past 11 and wala pa rin press con si Duterte. It was pre-recorded pa yun. And basically, yung in the middle of the night na press con ni Duterte is to say na LGUs should stand down. Which is super unfair kasi hindi naman nila na-experience yung realities na na-experience ng different barangays. So, anong sinasabi ng anarchismo tungkol dito? Basically, Duterte, who comes from a national government, who comes from a seat of power that's very detached and very, um, ano ba, different sa konteksto ng mga LGU, basically, nagmamarunong ang national government natin na alam niya kung ano ang tama, alam niya kung ano ang dapat, or maybe hindi niya alam at gusto nilang mag-practice ng power niya. Pero sinasabi nila na yung mga LGUs na nakababad sa realidad ng mga tao nila, hindi dapat sila magmarunong, hindi dapat sila gumalaw based on the needs of their people. At sa akin, napaka-klaro, napakalinaw ng inherent um, incompatibilities at incongruities ng sistema natin ngayon sa sistema na dapat ikinabubuhay ng mga tao. Kasi first of all, sa Pilipinas, napakalinaw naman na um, ang day-to-day living natin ay nakar- nakaroon talaga sa communities natin. Kailangan natin lumabas para mabuhay. Kailangan natin bumili ng pagkain, kailangan natin mag-travel, kailangan natin magtrabaho, etc. etc. And then you have this government who doesn't seem to have any idea of what the people do in their day-to-day lives, enforcing these kinds of notions on people who have to live their lives despite the quarantine. So, uh, ang national government sinasabi na um, magsara ang mga factory, ang mga food manufacturers na merong 1 to 2 months na imbak. Kasi 
para daw hindi lumabas yung mga tao. Which is super stupid kasi the fact that people have to go out means that they have to work. They have to work, they have to feed their families, and these are most likely day-to-day wage earners. So, nagmamaroon ang gobyerno, pinapatigil ang mga businesses na essential basically, hindi lang para sa functioning ng society, but even for the individual lives of the people. Uh, sinasabi ng gobyerno na huwag magmarunong, hindi pwedeng magpatakbo ng tricycle sa mga communities kahit na sobrang kailangan nila ng transportation. Ang mga pwede lang gumalaw ay yung mga may private car o yung mga may sipag na maglakad from place to place, even if those places are what? Kilometers, miles away from each other. So, obviously, malinaw, at least para sa akin, and ayokong sabihin na hindi marunong o nabobo ang mga tao na hindi nakikita yung mga bagay na nakikita ko. Kasi, I also come from a context that allows me to um, analyze these situations in a flash, having come from a sociology background. But it's clear to me that Duterte doesn't know, or his administration doesn't know, how the day-to-day living of people functions. Hindi nila naiintindihan na kailangan ng mga taong mabuhay sa pang-araw-araw, kaya lumalabas sila kasi kailangan nilang kumita, kailangan nilang trabaho. At unfortunately, uso pa rin ang endo dito. Uso pa rin ang ano, napakababang minimum wage. Uso pa rin na kailangan mong mangutang para lang mapakain yung pamilya mo. And that's obviously not fair. So, yung buhay ng mga tao na nakasalalay sila sa um, ganitong mga, inkong, uh, sa mga, ano ba, harsh realities, I guess, ng sistema ang ginagalawan natin. Hindi sila tinetake into account. And I don't want to be kind about the government and the system and say na, oh, hindi lang siguro nila na take into account to, hindi lang siguro nila na calculate yung possibilities. Because for me, it's been consistent under the Duterte administration na wala silang pake sa buhay ng pang-araw-araw na Pilipino. So, COVID- right now is proving how incongruent the system is with the ways we can all live and thrive. Um, ano pa ba? Uh, siguro yung sitwasyon ng trabaho, for example, napakalinaw for me na lumalabas na ang daming trabaho na hindi nga kailangan sa lipunan natin. So, ang tawag nila David Graeber dito ay bullshit jobs. Um, mga trabaho ng mga manager, mga trabaho sa, I don't know, mga trabaho basically sa opisina na hindi naman essential para sa pagtakbo ng lipunan. I'm sorry to say this, but those jobs are typically what you would lump under bullshit jobs. Kasi hindi sila kailangan para sa um, day-to-day na functioning ng lipunan. And at the same time, there are these positions in between jobs that may be somewhat necessary in a way. Na tinatry na kontrolin lang basically yung pamuhay ng mga nagtatrabaho. For example, managers, they don't really do shit. They don't do much. It's the workers that do something. And yet, managers are higher in the hierarchy of their companies and they get, they get paid so much more. For what? Practicing surveillance on their workers. So, para sa akin, um, ano pa ba yung different incongruences ng system aside from economic aspect nito, aside from the fact nga na the system itself is made so that others will have to live in inequality. Um, the quarantine is proving even more that people are social beings and that we rely on each other to live. Kailangan natin ng serbisyo at um, pagtutulungan ng isa't isa para mabuhay sa pang-araw-araw natin. So, for example, um, isa ang ecosystem siguro natin sa urban spaces ngayon is that, um, for example, kami kanina um, nagutom kami so, nagpa-deliver kami ng pagkain um, so, very simple straightforward relationship siya, if you would look at it just that way, but when you look into it ang daming maliliit na trabaho at ang daming may mga tao na pumapasok para punan yung mga yun. basically, there's this whole division of labor na pumapasok sa bawat bagay na ginagawa natin sa lipunan. So, meron kang um, meron kang gagawa ng pizza, for example. Meron kang magluluto ng pizza. Meron kang magkocompute ng kung ano yung presyo ng binili na pizza. Meron ka nung magda-deliver. And then, meron ka nung tatanggap, which is, kunwari, kung sino man yung nasa bahay na nag-order. So, even more ngayon, under quarantine, na lumalabas na yung division of labor natin, first of all, is not feasible because of how much the state 
and the system in its entirety try to co- try to control the different aspects of our lives so sinasabi nila for example na ano ba um kailangang higpitan yung pag-implement ng quarantine so businesses like restaurants for example would have to run in very limited um hours and at the same time still sustain yung operations nila Para may silang mga trabahador, may mga expenses sa restaurant, kailangan bayaran, pero you're existing in a quarantine. So, parang, yung mga manggagawa, time and time again, usually, yung nagsasuffer sa ganitong sitwasyon, hindi siya fair, hindi siya patas, hindi siya okay. Pero dahil sa quarantine, nakikita natin na ang daming spaces for people to move. Um, siguro, one thing that I would like to discuss, most of all, is yung dami ng volunteer efforts na lumalabas ngayon. So, obviously, um, ang laki ng bagay na ang daming taong nakarecognize na hindi fair ang quarantine. Hindi siya fair dahil yung mga may hirap, yung mga day wage earners, yung mga homeless, yung mga may sakit, elderly, yung mga hindi makalabas ng bahay for some other reason, hindi sila mabubuhay sa quarantine. Bakit? Kasi well, limited yung resources nila, hindi nila kaya na mabuhay lang mag-isa. And now, we are being forced into isolation. We humanity as social beings are being forced into isolation when we're not supposed to live that way. And isolation is actually one of the major neoliberal projects. Neoliberalism, which is a system that relies on, I don't know, further division amongst people para hindi tayo mag against the system. Wow. <laughs> Naging revolutionary speech na siya. Charot. Pero basically, yung sistema natin, it's trying to force people into more isolation and more independence when in fact we can't really live that way. Hindi natin kayang mabuhay ng wala ang isa't isa kasi nga hindi tayo pantay-pantay, magkakaiba tayo ng pangangailangan. Um, ang daming tao na nakapansin, first of all, na yung mga may hirap nga at day wage earners, ang isa mga pinakauna magsasuffer. At may kita natin to sa mga nagpo-post sa Facebook, for example, ng pictures or mga kwento na mga manggagawa na uh, galing pa sa probinsya, pumunta ng Maynila bilang construction worker nung nag-quarantine, nagkaroon ng work suspension at ngayon, kailangan nilang bumalik sa mga probinsya nila dahil wala silang trabaho sa Maynila. So, um, ang biyahe nila pabalik dahil walang public transpo, maglalakad sila. So, there was one man who walked from Paranaque, kailangan niyang bumalik ng Tarlac, I think, Eight hours pa lang nilakad niya from Paranaque, Quezon City pa lang inabot niya. So, how many more hours ang kailangan niyang harapin na naglalakad lang siya? Kasi wala siyang masakyan, wala rin siyang kita kasi suspended na yung trabaho. So, alam mo yun, parang ganun yung mga sitwasyon ng papaisip ka na lang na parang, shit, ano bang, ano bang mangyayari sa mga tao under COVID? Ano yung mga pwede natin gawin? At ano yung mga mangyayari sa atin? Sinong mabubuhay after this quarantine. Unfortunately for me, it's not clear. Kasi actually kanina, nung nalaman ko yung pass, medyo nag-hyperventilate na ako at nagkaroon na ako ng existential crisis. Kasi hindi ko alam kung paano namin kukunin yung pass na yon. At hindi namin alam kung sino yung bibili ng mga kailangan namin kasi wala kaming driver, wala kaming sasakyan dito sa bahay. So, I don't know, I guess going back to this notion of another world being possible, dito papasok yung volunteer efforts ng mga tao. It's clear all the more even now that the government isn't necessary. The national centralized government isn't necessary for people to live because we're relying on the kindness and the cooperation of each other currently. So, pumasok yung mga tao na um, may nagsabi na kailangan ng transport ng mga health workers at ng mga, at ng mga nagtatrabaho pa ngayon kasi hindi pwede ang public transport. Wala tayong public transport at walang sasakyan lahat ng tao. So, sino yung pumasok doon? May gumawa ng... Uh, may nag-coordinate ng mga kilalang carpoolers, I think, at saka may sasakyan na kung may private car kayo, um, maybe you could volunteer, list your name here, and we can try to coordinate a sense of, uh, a sense of shuttle service para sa mga tao na kailangan pumunta ng trabaho. So, sino nag-effort nun? Mga taong bayan. There was really mostly no hand on government sa efforts ng mga tao na yun. There are also people um, who are already working in NGOs, in communities, in different spaces, na walang hand on gobyerno, pero sobra-sobra pa yun na ang bagay sa communities. For example, Save San Roque. Save San Roque, um, sila yung collective, I think, ng mga um, settlers 
I don't know kung may politically apt term ba or what to use here. But basically, yung mga nakatira sa area ng San Roque na matagal nang uh, tinatry na i-develop at paalisin ng mga kapitalista, meron silang binong kolektiba para ipagtanggol ang mga karapatan ng mga nakatira doon at magbuo ng mas solid na community, bumuo ng plan na safe basically at livable para sa mga tao doon. So, Save San Roque as a collective, I don't think they're a formal organization. Um, basically, para siyang coalition or alliance ng different people who went into the space and said na, okay, I want to offer my services for um, this vulnerable sector. So, sila, hawak na nga nila yung urban plan ng community na yun. Sila pa yung nagsabi na, okay, kailangan nating tulungan yung community natin ma-fulfill yung needs nila. So, ngayon, tumatanggap sila ng donations, tumatanggap sila both, I think, in cash and in kind para masustain yung pamumuhay ng mga tao sa communities nila. So, may hand ba yung government doon? Possibly, in terms of donation and aid, coordination-wise and everything else, it was the people who were moving for that. Ano pa ba? Um, siguro ngayon, isa sa mga efforts na ginagawa or na I'm supposed to be helping out with, pero dahil nag-Facebook Live ako, hindi ko siya mapagtuunan ng pansin, um, dalawang efforts yung ginagawa ko ngayon. Um, mostly nasa data collection analysis side ako ng mga bagay. So, isa ay dun sa um, community namin, which is the disgruntled young people. And what we're doing now is we're trying to develop, coordinate, and um, basically funnel efforts into this space para lahat ng existing na um, donations, volunteer efforts, transpo, whatever, ay mapunta sa mga spaces na pinakakailangan sila. So, um, yung community namin, merong mga government workers doon, merong mga taong affiliated with the government, and they try to channel our needs to those, kasi syempre, government ang merong kapangyarihan at ang merong resources or funds to be able to sustain these efforts better or to sustain and meet the needs of vulnerable sectors better. Kasi ilang milyon, ilang bilyon ba naman ang meron ng gobyerno, di ba? But ultimately, the people who are starting the space and who are primarily moving the space, they're not really from the government. Like, a lot of us aren't. Ako, kontraktol ako ng gobyerno, pero itong trabahong ginagawa ko, it's not related to my government work. Like, I'm doing so much more now as a volunteer than I am with my work. Uh, ano pa ba yung mga different um, spaces na gumagalaw ngayon? Um, I'm trying to remember others, pero basically, mga ta- mga, ano yun, mga parang private citizens din talaga, mostly yung actively nagsustart ng mga ganitong efforts. And that, for me, that's not to belittle the efforts of government workers. It's not to belittle um, yung role ng mga, mga ng gobyerno, especially in light of this crisis. And at sa mga kaibigan ko sa OVP, sobrang bilib ako sa effort at sa pagod ng opisina ninyo. But, at the same time, you're not even supposed to ones who are raising that much funds and who are looking for all of that. Kasi supposedly in a centralized national government nakasantabi na resources na mga tao at na coordination para sa mga bagay na to. So, alam mo yun, parang meron kang centralized government. Meron kang structure that basically tries to pull all these resources together and pretends to know what is right for people in different spaces. And yet, it's not doing that. So, ano pang point? Ano pang role ng gobyerno? Kung ganun din naman, kung wala siyang ginagawa, ba? Diba? So, for me, um, ang lawak at ang laki ng space ngayon, hindi man tayo makalabas sa mga bahay natin. There is so much space for our political imaginations to run rampant and to run wild. Because it's clear that the government system, that capitalism or what you want to call it, isn't working for the people. There is so much space to imagine what else is possible after this. And I think I read an article that basically said na matapos o during COVID and when it ends, we should not aspire for normalcy. We should not aspire to go back to what things used to be before all of this happened. Because now more than ever, it's clear that things are broken and the system is broken. And, and I tweeted about this the other day. But basically, I was talking about capitalism and how capitalism isn't broken, isn't a failure. What's happening now isn't a failure of capitalism. It's not a crisis of capitalism. It's crisis capitalism. Capitalism is working perfectly because it still prioritizes profits with disregard for the workers and their needs. 
So, hindi pagkakamali ng kapitalismo ang nangyayari ngayon, it's going according to its plan. And the plan is to hoard more profits and to make sure that only a specific group of people survive. Um, siguro, um, I'm gonna try to go to like some of the other points that friends wanted me to bring up. But, siguro mag-comment lang kayo and I'll try to get back to those, I guess, and discuss them. Um, so, isa sa mga naunang um, tinanong sa akin was kung ano yung dapat nating ako, or siguro ako, as an anarchist and like the people who are anarchists out there ano yung dapat gawin ng anarchismo regarding liberals and sock dems who might be co-opting mutual aid. First of all walang political strength ng anarchismo dito sa Pilipinas so for me the fact na lumutang ang term na mutual aid media dahil nagpa-mutual aid tricycle si ang laking bagay nun for us. But unfortunately and realistically, walang political force ang anarchism dahil hindi tayo consolidated dahil kulang ang mass base natin. Dahil hindi tayo nag-uusap-usap. Dahil mas madalas pa tayong mag-away-away sa isa't isa. At dahil hindi tayo mahusay mag-organize unfortunately ngayon. So, anong pang kailangan gawin para sa liberals and soft dems? We're trying to co-op this notion of mutual aid. Maybe we should open up discussions about anarchism. Maybe we should talk about mutual aid and what it really means. Maybe we should try to translate what mutual aid in terms that more people will understand and then try to teach them na actually this and that, cooperation and kindness, those are what we call an anarchism mutual aid. Kung kinoko-op man ng, lock, ng libs and sock dems yon, maybe that's a discussion for another time. Or maybe if you have friends na liberals and na sock dems, talk to them, introduce the concepts in anarchism and tell them na okay, ito yung anarchismo part and yung mga ethical principles na to. Kasi, para sa akin, learning opportunity naman lahat ng bagay. Hindi dapat nagbabakod ang anarchismo dahil sa, wala tayo sa sitwasyon at posisyon na magbakod at magmataas ngayon. Anarchism isn't supposed to be for moral ascendancy. Anarchism should be accessible for all. It should be a political philosophy that everyone can and should be able to identify with. So, ayun lang. I don't know how to answer this. Honestly, like, hindi ko alam kung paano sasagutin itong lives and soft dems co-opting mutual aid. Kasi, parang, sa akin, wala pa naman tayo sa space na kinoko-op tayo kasi wala naman tayong show of force pa. Um, next, siguro, um, ano yung mga pwede natin sigurong um, gawin concretely in light of the quarantine but still wanting to develop this sense of another world being possible. Um, Concretely, another world is possible when I say that it basically means na hindi natin kailangan ng gobyerno, hindi natin kailangan ng kapitalismo, hindi natin kailangan ng patriarchy and other isms sa lipunan para mabuhay tayo. It will save and help us is each other. And at the core of that, at the core of community, is basically building relationships and interactions with each other. So, mahalaga sa pagbuo ng bagong mundo natin ang mas genuine, mas honest, mas positive na relationship with each other. By positive relationships, I don't just mean away-away. I don't mean na para yun nga, toxic positivity, basically. I mean, by positive relationship, we should be able to engage each other better and more deeply. Be able to talk to each other in such a way na kung may kailangan tayo, openly nating may hingi yung pangailangan natin. Uh, with the hopes and the trust that mapupunan siya. And at the same time, um, kapag ka may ginawang mal o may misstep ang isa at ang sarili natin, kaya nating aminin siya openly, kaya nating maging accountable sa isa't isa at sa sarili natin. So, communities are basically embedded in our relationships with each other. And our relationships are basically good examples of another world being possible outside this current system we have now. Uh, kunwari sa pamilya mo, if you don't come from an abusive family, family is one of the most important things to you. Um, you would do anything for your family. Kapag kami nagkamali sa pamilya mo, you don't say na, ah, oh, you're cancelled, bye. What you say is, you did something wrong. I'm mad at you, but I still care. And I want you to change. 
So that should be the root of relationships we have now. This sense of accountability with care, with compassion, and this sense of love and trust na kahit anong mangyari, um, you will have my back. Maybe not in such a way that if I do something toxic or you will support me still, but more in a way that you're always looking out for me and my potential to be better than who and what I am now. So this other world that we should be aspiring for should be rooted in all these positive values and traits na nakikita natin actually sa mga relationships natin. But ano ang sabi nila, I think sila sa joyful militancy yung nagsabi na parang we're already growing like cracks in the empire. Oh, we're, going, we're growing through the cracks of the empire. So empire is basically their word for um this amalgam o yung pagsasama-sama at pag-intertwine ng kapitalismo, estado, iba-iba pang mga bagay dyan. And, basically, sinasabi nila na yung another world na gusto natin, itong mas patas, mas mabuti, mas, com- mas may compassion na mundo para sa lahat ng nila lang na nag exist hindi siya utopia na hindi natin ever ma-achieve, hindi siya bagay na kailangan pa nating maghanap ng masyadong malayo para makita because it's already here it's already existing we're already living this other world that's possible through the healthy good relationships we have with each other so if we base our um if we base our plans for the future on the relationships we have now if we ask ourselves anong klasing mundo ba ang gusto kong magkaroon para sa sarili ko at para sa mga mahal ko sa buhay And if you're looking at parang how you interact with each other and you see na, oh, we actually work really well together, we're really healthy, we love each other, blah, 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 whatever, cheesy stuff, I know. But basically, that other world that's possible is already here. It's all a matter of expanding those spaces and ensuring na people see how necessary community and those relationships are para hindi na sila umasa sa gobyerno, para hindi na sila umasa sa sistema. Um, so to our friends, they have this notion of desolating the system. Na, kumbaga sa Marxist siguro, their idea is to destroy, to crush, to, I don't know, um, seize state power or whatever. But for anarchists, there's this notion of desolating the system where you develop the healthy, good spaces outside the grasp of the system. And make that the space that people want to live in and move into that space para unti-unting mag-crumble yung sistema nang walang taong sumusuporta sa kanya. Uh, sa US, nagagawa nila to. They have um, community-wide occupies, especially for single moms and the homeless. I think sa New York, I'm not sure, New York or LA, something like that. And at the same time, um, Seattle is expanding mutual aid. So, uh, meron silang mga door-to-door efforts, I think, para i-gage yung mga pangailangan ng mga tao at i-deliver yung mga pangailangan nila, like right at their doorstep. And these are all people who are working independent of the government, maybe there's some um, coordination or may konting effort na pumapasok uh, from the government, but it's less the government's project and more the people's. I think even um, even if ang ganda ng notion of desolating the system, there still has to be this notion of demanding accountability from the system because it took so much away from us and it's taking so much away from us. And we deserve justice for all the things that it's taken away from us. So, ayun, uh, ang hadami ko sinabi, pero ang TLDR nun is, build your communities, build your relationships with each other. And, um, it's really important, I guess, to identify your community, especially during the quarantine, all the more important that um, if you have ties within your geographic community, to utilize that. Um, for example, yung sa mga naisip ko, uh, dun sa effort namin mag-survey sa Marikina, kinolekta namin yung mga hinaing ng mga tao, yung mga pangailangan nila, kung ano yung mga nagawa na ng local government for them at kung ano yung mga hindi pa. And unfortunately, kahit na lumalabas sa Facebook ni Marcy na marami na siyang ginawa, ang dami pa rin spaces na hindi naabot ng LGU. So, for me, one of the things that we're thinking of doing is writing to the government with the output um, we got from the survey and then showing them na eto yung mga spaces, eto yung mga pangailangan ng barangay na hindi pa napupunan. Another thing might be, maka maganda na Um, siguro as a way to ease people into political participation if you ever do those surveys or, or kahit na mag-gather lang kayo ng group of people who have similar demands and needs from the government, create a petition like not a change.org because I don't know how those work but an actual written petition where you write your demands offer suggestions demand accountability from the government 
affix your names and your signatures, and then submit it to the government. Hindi illegal yun. That's actually one of the very small spaces that people think um, liberal democracy has to offer. And unfortunately, hindi ako sa liberal democracy, pero nagigets ko yung sense of learned helplessness and disempowerment na meron tayo ngayon. Da- kasi, kasi we're stuck at home. We're not really doing anything. We can't do anything because we can't go out. So maybe starting petitions might be a way for people to feel, parang kumbaga to feel kung ano yung mga pwede nilang gawin. And then when those things don't work, slowly escalate. Um, if you want more ideas about this, you can message me. I can try to provide resources as well as my own suggestions. Kung may gusto kayong gawin para sa communities ninyo. But all the more geographic communities are important. If you don't have geographic communities, build your communities through your friendships, online especially. So actually, one of the reasons why I'm doing this Facebook Live is to try to test out um, the online space at kung paano namin mas may engage yung community na binubuo at nabubuo namin sa usapang lalaki. Um, first of all, sabrang miss ko na yung mga kaibigan ko so gusto kong makita yung mga mukha nila at medyo sad tong FB live kasi ako lang mag-isa but at the same time if we could talk about things that matter to us as a community about gender equality and toxic masculinity and safe spaces for all then that might be something that we can do while we're stuck in the hellhole that is our home during the quarantine and summer um Ayun, isa sigurong gusto ko rin i-discuss, uh, since medyo napahapyawan ko na rin, is the necessity of community care and direct democracy. So, ayun nga, unfortunately, limited ang space natin ngayon physically dahil sa quarantine. But, um, direct democracy is a necessary tenet of anarchism. So, hindi kami niniwala sa political participation just through elections and the polls or, I don't know, commenting and sharing on Facebook. Sorry, I know a lot of us do that, but unfortunately, that's not enough to turn the tides. There has to be more. And for anarchism, direct democracy is the best way to go. How do you go about doing that? Um, one of the ways that they do it in Chile during their revolution, I guess, or uprising against the government, is through community convened councils. So, nagpapatawag yung mga, I don't know, barangay nila or something para mag-usap-usap kung ano yung mga demands nila sa gobyerno, kung ano yung mga changes na gusto nilang ipasok sa national constitution nila. Kasi I think ang konteksto doon ay gustong palitan ng gobyerno yung constitution ng walang pagsangguni sa mga tao. So, ang gusto nilang gawin um, is basically to force again these changes on the people without even understanding where these people are coming from, what their needs are, what their rights should be. Parang ganun. And that sort of mirrors also our situation ngayon sa quarantine and that our national government is trying to enforce all these laws that are not grounded in any sort of livable reality for the Filipino people. So unfortunately nga sa ngayon, hindi posible ang physical spaces dahil we're trying to make sure that no one catches COVID or that anyone who has COVID doesn't infect anyone else. But a way to do that might be um, virtually, like online. Maybe start a Zoom chat with friends, with people who may have ideas about volunteering or doing work or whatever kinds of changes you might do. Um, isa sa mga projects actually na gusto kong simulan ngayon is I want to do um, community gardens, especially ngayon quarantine. Sobrang kailangan siya ng mga homeless at ng mga nangangailangan ng pagkain. So maybe that's a project you guys can talk about through Google Hangouts, Zoom, Whatever messenger call, FaceTime, I don't know if you can group call via FaceTime. But basically, um, if you can't do physical spaces, use all the capacities we have online to build community conversations. Direct democracy can only be built if you have numbers and if you have a community that's with you, that's riding the political need to talk about these things. And your community that will help you push for changes in, I don't know, direct democracy and participation politically, um, also will be the community that will provide care for you. Especially kung rooted siya geographically in the time of COVID, your community will be the one to keep you alive, to sustain you both physically, emotionally, mentally, and in many other aspects. Community care is important now more than ever kasi nakaka-panic, nakaka-paranoid, nakaka-anxious talaga ang sitwasyon ng COVID ngayon. Um, unfortunately, naka- medyo naka 
ano ba, hindi ko alam kung ba, or ano yung mga working situation ng many psychologists and psychiatrists ngayon. Pero, hindi kayo pwede mag face-to-face sessions because obviously COVID and the quarantine. But, in community care, um, it's important to be mindful of the needs of each other, not just physically, but also emotionally. So, community care, dito papasok yung mas konkreto na may kapitbahay ka na kailangan na pagkain tapos meron pa kayong konting stock. Baka pwedeng mumigay kayo ng konting meron kayo para matulungan sila. Kasi, pare-pareho naman kayo ng uh, pinagdadaanan in the sense na nasa quarantine kayo, pero iba-iba kayo ng set of needs dahil iba-iba kayo ng konteksto ng pinanggagalingan kahit nasa isang space kayo. So, community care is basically looking out for each other, wanting the best for each other and for everyone around you. And it's all the more important now because it's clear that our government does not care for us. The only people, the only groups of people who will care for us are the people that are already there. The people that are already with us. Our friends, our, I don't know, villages, if you have friends in your village, um, our families, you know, mga ganong klase ng espasyo. At kung meron ka ng existing community, I guess it's not enough that there's an existing and strong community. It's also the fact na kailangan natin ng healthy communities. So, it's not just healthy in the sense na mentally, emotionally healthy ka. It's not just like doing self-care for yourself. It's also being able to feel out our relationships with each other better. Kailangan natin i-develop yung relationships natin sa isa't isa, especially now that we're stuck in our homes. Because toxic relationships don't really have much more space emotionally and mentally dahil stuck na nga tayong lahat sa bahay natin sa mag away pa tayo. Um, ayun, mutual aid and how to go about it. So, I kind of discussed this kanina, but yuck, konyo. But, basically, um, for mutual aid, isa sa mga bagay na dapat nating uh, tingnan talaga is kung ano yung needs ng mga tao sa paligid natin. Kasi yun naman yung direkta natin yung matutulungan. At kung yung mga environment natin, hindi ganun kalaki yung pangailangan. Ano yung mga pangailangan ng mga tao na sa susunod na barangay, for example, or I don't know. Um, siguro after this, I'll post yung Excel file ng collated efforts para sa mga health workers, frontliners, at vulnerable sectors. Pero sa ngayon, um, kahit na limited ang spaces natin for mutual aid, I don't know, um, some ideas off the top of my head, kung kaya ninyong gumawa at magtahi ng face masks, um, that's a space for you to move in. If you could do yung mga face protector things, yung merong DIY na umiikot ngayon sa Facebook, maybe you can do that. Um, maybe you can do, I don't know. Um, yun nga, I'm going back to one of the tenets of anarchism. It's that we have different things that we can offer, that we can provide for each other. And it's a matter of knowing ano yung skills, ano yung capabilities, ano yung passions na kaya mong, um, natingin mo, kaya mong ishare sa mundo na kaya mong i-share sa community mo, sa mga nangangailangan. Kasi, no one can determine what your skills are for you. It's you who knows best kung ano yung mga kaya mo at hindi mo kaya. And it's a lot of trusting yourself and trusting your capabilities as well. Um, shoot me a message, I guess, if you want to talk more about it, if you want to explore more about the idea of mutual aid, I may have resources that can help. But for now, one of the things that I really want to emphasize is that iba-iba tayo ng kayang ibigay. Ako, wala akong perang mabibigay para sa mga nangangailangan. Wala akong farm para mag-provide ng pagkain. Wala akong sasakyan para magtumulong ng shuttle or delivery. Pero, yung efforts ko, pinapasok ko ngayon sa um, mga existing efforts, mga volunteer efforts, para gumawa ng mas maraming efforts pa sa mga vulnerable sectors. Um, going back siguro dun sa topic ng Another World being possible, uh, dahil bringing up ni Feto, um, isa sa mga mahalagang example of another world being possible without government, without capitalism, without system is indigenous people's communities and groups. So indigenous people's systems, they already live um, lives generally outside the grasp of the government. Um, they live sustainable lifestyles without urbanization. And the reason naman na nahihirapan talagang IPs isn't because they're IPs and they're living uncivilizedly. It's more that um, the government and capitalism and all the other existing systems that are trying to push them out are pushing them out of the ways of living that they've created. So indigenous people's lifestyles are actually really well attuned to the needs not only of the people in the community but also of the environment. So, sobrang 
galing nilang makiramdam sa pangangailangan hindi lang ng isa't isa kung hindi ng kapaligiran nila, ng mga hayop, ng environment, I guess, whatever. And I think that's something that we should all aspire for. Um, so, ay- ayun, kukonnect ko siya dun sa another world being possible because it's already another world possible. It already exists. And the fact is, it's existed way before any of the structures we have now. It's older than the government. It's older than capitalism. Indigenous people's ways of life are one of the healthiest, one of the sturdiest, and one of the most utopic ways of living we have. And it's not to tokenize, it's not to romanticize or put IP communities on a pedestal. It's more of a question of us um, on engaging gaano ba necessary yung structures na meron tayo ngayon. Gaano ba kahalaga ang gobyerno, gaano ba kahalaga ang factory production para magkaroon tayo ng mga ganitong klase ng bagay, para magkaroon tayo ng lipunan na nabubuhay ng tama if society even lives right at all currently. So, um, yun, um, I think kailangan nating itanong sa sarili natin before, um, or if political imagination about possible worlds is still too difficult to grasp for us, maybe we can ask how necessary are the structures in place we have right now for the ways of living we have, and how necessary are these structures for ways of living that we can have in the future. Um... Titingin ako dito sa mga comments kasi wala lang. Irarap up ko na siguro to. Um, sabi ni Pao, Hi Pao, I miss you. Um, how different do you think the experience is of women in the face of COVID-19? Um, and dami actually lumalabas na magandang article about the different experiences of women during quarantine compared to the realities of others, especially men, I guess. Um, even before COVID and even before quarantine, women have been relegated to the domestic sphere for, I don't know, almost forever. At sa akin, um, mas klaro at malinaw ngayon na mas mahirap ang buhay ng mga babae under the quarantine. First of all, everyone's stuck at home. You have to feed all those mouths and put up with all the people in your house at the same time. You have to take care of all of them. Secondly, um, there's also the concern na kahit na lahat ng tao nasa bahay, you would assume, di ba, na dahil mas maraming tao sa bahay, mas maraming tumutulong sa mga gawaing bahay. But, because of how fucked up gender divisions of labor are um, in our system, or how fucked up this in our system currently, hindi na distribute yung trabaho sa bahay para sa maraming tao. So, I think, mas mahirap ang buhay ng babae ngayon under quarantine dahil mas marami silang tinatrabaho and there's no critical engagement amongst people ng mga bagay at responsibilidad na pwede lang saluhin habang stuck silang lahat sa isang bahay during quarantine. So, safety, for example, um, may isang magandang article, I think, uh, regarding the realities of domestic abuse um, and how much more possible it is during quarantine. So, the exposure, the long, long-term exposure pa lang sa abusers mo is already something that should raise concern, especially for people who are concerned with domestic abuse. Health, um, may isa akong nabasa na nanay siya. Um, kakapanganak niya lang, I think she has a six-month-old baby and everyone else sa bahay nila, senior. So, in the face of that, hindi lang sarili niya yung kailangan niyang alagaan. Kung hindi pati yung kalusugan ng lahat ng tao sa bahay nila. Because everyone basically at home is vulnerable. So, kung ganun yung sitwasyon mo at hindi ka pa hinahatian ng trabaho ng iba't ibang tao sa bahay, parang mas malaki, hindi dahil mas maraming tao na nanatili sa bahay ngayon, mas maraming taong kailangan alagaan, mas nagpa-pile up yung domestic and emotional labor sa mga kababaihan. So, the call for another world being possible isn't just for us to drastically rethink how our larger society functions, but even how our communities, how our, how our internal communities, how our, how our internal systems function. Dahil ang pamilya mismo ay isang sistema din. At kung nag aspire tayo ng malawak ang pagbabago sa labas, sa mas malawak na sistema, kung na aspire tayo na walang gobyerno, walang kapitalismo, pero hindi natin na-engage kung paano tayo makitungo sa mga tao sa loob ng bahay natin. Kung hindi natin na-engage kung paano tayo makitungo, especially sa kababaihan, then moot point ang paghingi natin ng bagong sistema. Kasi tayo mismo, hindi natin binabago yung sarili natin ugali. Which is basically 
a reproduction of the values of the toxic systems we have in place. So for a healthier society, for a more revolutionary, larger society, we have to drastically rethink and re-engage our own relationships and interactions with each other. Um, ano pa ba? Hindi ko alam kung meron pang mga questions dito or something. Um, tanong ni Inigo. Hi, Inigo. Um, does a centralized national government have no place within anarchism? What if a foreign power decides to exploit us? Is that not why the US united in the first place? So, um, maraming existing movements actually um, ngayon na anarchist or anarchistic in leaning, pero um, they're mutually united by efforts, first of all, of decolonization, and second of all, nationalism. So, nationalism isn't typically something that anarchists want to vouch for, but for colonized systems and countries, um, mahalaga ang notion ng nationalism for a sense of solidarity and unity to try to really fight off these foreign powers and these colonizer forces, I guess. Um, but, yeah, that's the thing, eh. Sa anarchismo, um, hindi national centralized government ang meron sila. The conception that they experimented with during the Spanish um, Civil War or the Spanish Revolution, which was a big anarchist experiment, was really federations. So what they did was they had community councils, I think, that determined ano yung needs ng community nila for the specific amount of time. And then they have someone who collects all that information and then passes it on to a bigger council, kumbaga. Na that's what they are, uh, yun, parang federation yung tawag nila. And basically, federations aren't necessarily centralized governments. They're not national governments. They're more spaces to be able to um, engage the different communities within a space para malaman ko ano yung mga pangailangan, ano yung mga concerns, at mapag-usapan siya. So, federations don't govern. They merely try to um, provide a space for commu- for existing communities to be able to trade, kumbaga, to be able to coordinate necessary actions regarding spaces that might uh, regarding issues that might require the movement or response of the entire space of communities. So, um, kung sakupin tayo or exploit ng isang foreign power, well, in an anarchist um, space, typically, hindi dapat maging, uh, I mean, ideally, walang mga bansa sa anarchism. But, um, realistically speaking, that's actually one of the reasons why Rojava is a really good example of an anarchist society. So, they're really trying to build this commune. I don't know if they actively brand themselves as anarchists, but it's a really good fulfillment and practice of anarchist principles. I think they have anarchist um, inspirations, but they have militias. Um, they're not the military. Militias are basically parang mga membro lang din ng lipunan nila na marunong humahak ng armas. And they try to protect each other. So, actively yun, um, especially in the light of Rojava, which is in Syria, na unang kalaban nila ISIS, and then the US, and then Turkey. So, kaka-video call lang namin, actually, ng friend ko kanina, who attended this exhibit on films created within Rojava by the community itself. At ang sabi niya, um, two years ago, something like that, takot ng mga tao na mag-dissolve ang Rojava dahil um, the different groups inside, kasi iba-ibang grupo siya, may Kurds, may Arabs, etc. So, ang takot nila ay the different groups that exist inside Rojava might fall into fighting, um, and they were afraid that the Arabs will turn their backs on the people. But actually, um, what's happening now, apparently, um, is that yung mga, uh, since Turkey started attacking Rojava, and Syria in general, I think, mas maraming Arabs ang pumanik sa Syria, and when you talk to them, they will say na parang wala silang pake masyado sa pagkakaiba-iba nila ethnically. Their concern is that this is their home now. This is their community. They want to take care of this because of the kinds of freedom and the intensity of life and relationships they have in Rojava. So I'm gonna look for possible documentaries on Rojava um, and maybe I'll try to post it also. Pero magandang example sila eh ng kung paano wala kang centralized national government. 
pero meron kang pwersa na lumalaban sa mga sumusubok manakop sa'yo. I think ang ginagawa nila is that it's basically councils on all levels. So, smallest level is the neighborhood or community council, and then the biggest is like council of councils siya, parang ganun. It's not a centralized government, kasi a centralized national government acts um, without the need really for ano ba, parang without really the need to parang ask the people how to best act, parang the central government assumes the best for the people without necessarily coordinating or asking them for their input. But for Rojava and for the Spanish Civil War, I think, what they really did is, um, kailangan lahat ng tao engage, kailangan lahat marinig, kailangan maintindihan natin kung ano yung mga kabut sa community natin. And actually, sa experience ko sa usapang nalaki, um, organizing and coordinating or events, hindi siya kasing kalat in the sense na everyone's trying to force their say immediately. Maganda, lively ang democracy kung ganun. But actually, what happens is that when people trust your capacities and trust um, each other with the skills and the situations that they find themselves in, more often than not, hindi sila, ano ba, hindi sila, hindi sila masyadong complicated kausapin. Kasi usually, kung ano yung perspective ng community, and I think this is important, like having a like-minded group of people with you also. If you have a group of people who express the same needs and the same interests, you can actually pull those interests and then sort of pitch it in. Hindi siya representative democracy kasi you're all still trying to parang have your own nuanced say in the matter. It's just also a matter of being able to trust each other na you have your best interests in mind. Um, ano pa ba? I don't know. Oh, I've been talking for an hour. Uh, I don't know what else to talk about, but siguro, ano ba? I may do this again. I, I don't know, mag-propose kayo ng topics to talk about, I guess. But in some, siguro, sorry sa mga ngayon lang nag-tune in at nanonood, I talked about how another world is possible in light of um, the issues we're confronting with COVID and the quarantine. And basically, another world is possible, first of all, because the world we have now and the systems in, in place to um, the systems in place to support the existence of the world we have now is really not in the best interests of the people. It's in the best interests of the few. So that's one of the reasons why we need another world. And that world is possible already, secondly, because those examples of different worlds existing are already here. We can look to indigenous communities. We can look to how barangays who aren't being assisted by their government are trying to help sustain each other. But the point is, hindi natin kailangan ng taong naguuto sa atin at hindi natin kailangan ng taong nagsasabi sa atin ng kung anong kailangan gawin at hindi pwedeng gawin para lang makakilos tayo. The only ones that we can rely on now, the only people we have now are each other. And I think um, this quarantine and the many fucks up, the many fuck ups of the government during the quarantine and in enforcing the quarantine is a very potent, fertile space for us to plant seeds and ideas of how the world could possibly be. Kaya natin itanong sa sarili natin ngayon, of all times especially, kung ano bang klasing mundo ang isang mundong kayang bigyan ng tahanan ng walang tahanan, na bigyang pagkain ng walang pagkain, nang hindi ka umaasa sa isang presidente o isang national government na wala namang pakis sa mga pangangailangan ng mga tao niya. So I think um, the quarantine is a good space to philosophize in the sense na we can ask what does a better world look like for us? Are there elements of this better world existing now? And what are the things that we can do without in this better world? O ano yung mga necessities, requirements na meron dapat ang better world na gusto natin at ano ang mga bagay na expendable na hindi necessary na hindi talaga natin kailangan sa pagbuo nitong bagong mundong to um, you may not agree with me but for me that means no national government especially not one under Duterte um, ginamit ko ng example is the fact na Vico Soto is doing so much more 
for Pasig City than the national government is doing for any of us. And, um, kung yung mga LGUs katulad ng Pasig, Marikina, I guess, to some extent, um, Makati, Valenzuela, I think, I'm not sure. Pero, kung yung mga LGUs ay mas nakakagalaw, hindi yun dahil lang sa resources, hindi lang yun dahil sa funding, although a big part of it is. I mean, Pasig is, I think, the richest city in Metro Manila. It's also because they're in tune with what their people need. They listen to the people when they ask for something. And willing silang i-bypass kung ano man yung mga bobong polisiya na nilalabas ng national government. Para lang siguraduhin na mabuhay yung mga tao nila. Um, sa pagpasok, I mean, sa ngayon, nagtatanong pa lang tayo, pero sa pagpasok sa isang bagong mundo na gusto nating buuin kasama ang isa't isa, um, mahalaga na walang maiwanan, mahalaga na magtulungan tayong lahat, uh, hindi porket ganito ka o ganyan, o wala kang ganito, wala kang ganyan, wala kang maambag kasi lahat tayo may maambag. It's just a matter of determining nga kung ano ang mga bagay na kaya nating gawin and not seeing those as limitations but rather as spaces that can be developed in relation with each other. So, um, ano pa bang gusto sabihin? Um, another world is possible. Read Joyful Militancy. Charot. Um, and yung isa, I guess. Like, um, like, um, charot. Um, yung isang magandang quote siguro na nabasa ko, um, which is from the Crime Think article, um, Surviving the Virus and Anarchist Guide. Um, strong communities make police and politicians obsolete. So, yun nga, hindi natin kailangan umasa sa mga nakakataas na kapangyarihan. Dahil, at this point, tayo na lang naman ang inaasahan natin. So, ayun lang, um, I don't know, if you want me to do this again, wala kayong magagawa. Kasi gagawin ko pa rin siya, probably. Uh, message niyo ako if you want resources, if you still have questions, if you want to fight, I guess. But, Thank you for tuning in, I guess. And, ayun lang. Sorry makalat. Hindi ko talaga pinagplanuhan ko ano sasabihin ko dito. Yun lang. Bye-bye.